Okay, good day and welcome to this session. Um, in this session, we are going to be showing us how to conduct our research, how to write the chapter one of our research. And um, just like we have all known, um, in several schools, they have several ways um, in which these things are done in several universities. But um, what we'll just do today is to show us how the chapter one should always look like. Now, the chapter one is always the first um, chapters of your thesis, dissertation, or project work. And there are some things that are key in your chapter one. Um, for us here in this part of um, the world, this is how you arrange your chapter one. You make sure you centralize the chapter one and the item under chapter one is introduction. So therefore, all of the things you are doing under your chapter one is introduction, right? So um, the first item under your introduction, which is under your chapter one, is the background to the study. Some of us will write background of the study. It is not actually background of the study. It is background to the study, right? So there is the first item that we will have here. And I know as we are doing this, we are seeing some of all of these things. Now, these are various formatting styles that I'll be handling maybe in our next session. But this is what is expected. In this part of the world, um, it is expected that um, our line spacing is a double line spacing, just like we have it here. Um, in what we have here, a double line spacing. So this is where you come and you make it and ensure that it is double line spacing. So maybe as we progress, uh, maybe when we are doing um, the recording for formatting, uh, we'll have to look at that. But let me just run this through. Uh, chapter one, we have introduction as the entire topic head. Then the first item is background to the study. So in background to the study, you try to discuss all what your study is about, right? And if there are references or if there are definitions that you bring in your background to the study, um, you actually make sure you refer or you reference them properly, you cite them properly, right? Just like this is cited, right? So the first item is background to the study. The next item is your statement of the problem, right? Your statement of the problem. So uh, this is where you state the problem you are trying to solve, right? The problem that your research work is trying to solve, right? So, um, and after that, the next item you have in your introduction, that's your chapter one, is the research questions. Now, your research questions are like guide to what you want to achieve, to what you, you intend to, to achieve, how the steps that you intend to, you know, uh, achieve what you want to achieve, right? So, you know, when you are trying to prepare those steps, you ask yourself some questions, right? So those questions, um, when you take this step, you achieve those uh, questions. So let me take that again. Now the research question, I like those questions you set for yourself that when you answer them, it means you have finished your work, right? So it is always tied to your objective, right? Because your objectives are like the steps you are taking to achieve all of those things. So for instance, if you have, what is the current cybersecurity threat landscape in the Nigerian capital market? You must tie this question, or this question should be tied to your objectives, number one, to determine the current cyber threat landscape in the capital market. What is the current cyber threat landscape? So the moment you are able to get your objective one, you should be able to answer this research question one. So that is how research questions are being built. You actually try to draw them uh, from your objectives or match them with your objectives. So every research question, is tied to an objective, right? You can see have three research questions or one research question and have multiple objectives to achieve that particular one research question, but always know that your research questions and your objectives must work hand in hand, right? So the research questions are the questions you intend to answer, while the objectives are the steps you have put in place to you know, answer the research question. So your aim is actually your topic the topic you are actually looking at. So for instance, the aim of this study is to assess cybersecurity threat in the Nigerian capital market. So the topic here is definitely the assessment of cybersecurity threats in the Nigerian capital market. So always know that your aim is one, which is your topic, 
your research topic. Then your objectives are the steps in which you're taking to you know, answer the research questions, right? So then we also have the significance of the study, significance of the study, right? The significance, why is your study important? What are the important things that your study can you know, do? And if you are always writing on significance, always ensure that you capture the significance of your study to the academia, the significance of your study to the industry, right? And the significance of your study to other researchers, right? So those are the things you always capture when you're talking about your significance. Then you move to the scope. The scope is where you limit or where you draw the boundary of your work, right? So you see some, 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 some schools who say you should put scope and limitation. But most times the limitations are always at the, towards the end when you have finished your, um, your research work, that's when you'll be able to determine your limitations, right? So, but for now, you look at the scope. Most times in this climb now, we are looking at just scope of the study. The limitations in this climb comes at your last chapters, right? So the scope is where you draw your boundary of what and what you want to actually do and where are you considering as your case study, right? So that is your scope, right, of the study. Then you can move further to, you know, define some terminologies define some terminologies, which is the item number seven, right? Some terminologies that you know are not familiar or people will not be familiar with in your work. So you define them, right? So those are the seven basic steps or the seven basic subheadings or items that you need to have under your chapter one. Ensure that your chapter one is written this way. Chapter one, you have the introduction. The first item, like we have said, is the background to the study where you write a little background of what you are studying or of what you want to do. After that, you move to the problem, statement of the problem. After that, you move to the research question, then the aim and objective, the significance of the study, the scope of the study, and then definition of them. Then let me also say this, that most times you see some um, people writing hypothesis, research hypothesis. Now, research hypothesis, is actually optional in this um, claim, in this claim rather, because um, if you have the research questions, the research questions can actually fill in for the research hypothesis. Because um, one thing you should know is that either you're doing your, pro your, 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 your research work to respond to your hypothesis, or you're doing your research work to respond to your research questions. So the moment you have your research questions and you're doing your work to respond to your research questions, there might not be any need for you to develop a hypothesis. But if you are doing your research to respond to your hypothesis, then there, there might be no need for you to do the research question. But in this climb, it's always advisable that you use the research questions so that whatever you're doing, you can actually tie it to your research questions. So that is just what you need to know about, uh, you know, um, uh, um, re researching and writing your chapter one. So your chapter one have all of these key things and that's just all you need to know about it. So thank you. See you in the next episode.